I'm going to start off by saying what this guide isn't. This guide isn't for someone who's just getting into the gauntlet. This guide also isn't a speedrunning guide, as those strategies are very reset heavy and don't result in many kills per hour at all. This guide is for people who can consistently clear the gauntlet already, but have an average kill time of 9 to 11 minutes and want to lower that down to 8 minutes. First, I'd like to go over a few misconceptions. I've seen a lot of players say that tier 2 armor is worth it, so you can 100% guarantee the kill. However, that's totally false as going for tier 2 armor at best costs a full minute and at worst can cost you up to 3 minutes. This means that just after 8 runs, in the best case scenario, you've spent enough time collecting resources to have gotten a full kill if you had just gotten tier 1 armor instead. Tier 2 armor is for newer and experienced players and should never be crafted for those who already know what they're doing. Another fallacy I've seen is that the bow is the best weapon. In actuality, since the staff was buffed in mid-2020, the bow is slightly out DPS by both the staff and the halberd. Since the difference in the DPS is almost non-existent, that means that you should prioritize whichever two tier 3 weapons you get first. This is all assuming you have 99 magic and range of course, as well as augury and rigor. If you don't have rigor, then you should prioritize the staff over the bow since the staff has about a 24% DPS advantage over the bow. This is due to the fact that the bow is balanced around rigor's large max and an accuracy bonus, while the staff only gets a minor accuracy boost from augury. If you have some weird combination of prayer scrolls and levels, then you should use the DPS calculator in the description to figure out if it's worth it to prioritize one weapon over the other. Generally though, if there's about a 5% DPS difference or less, I would say just pick whichever one you get first. Start every run by sweeping the rooms directly adjacent to the starting room. You're looking for 3 of each armor resource, 1 weapon frame, 2 herbs, and 12 fish or so. It is an imperative that you collect all of this in your initial sweep, you only really need the weapon frame. Ideally you'll have 240 crystal shards, but if you don't, it's not that important. If the first or second rat or spider you kills drops a weapon frame, then don't bother killing the rest of them, as the small amount of crystals they drop isn't worth the time. If you knock a rat or spider down to 4 to 5 HP, then you should unequip your scepter and kick them to finish off the kill. At around this HP range, kicking has higher overkill DPS, which means it'll on average be slightly faster to kick versus use the scepter. The number of fish you want depends on your skill level. 12 is enough to get the kill 99.9% .9 of the time with a minor amount of mistakes and good DPSing. Any less than 12 is pretty risky, and any more is just for safety. Though I would recommend that you gradually lower the amount of fish you're bringing in until you're at about 12. Two potions should be a comfy amount to finish the boss fight with. Going for three potions will just add to the possibility of having to scour the whole gauntlet for one resource, and over many runs that's going to cost you a lot of time. If you do not have enough crystal shards to build everything, then prioritize the tier 2 bow, then the two vials for your potions. If you're missing one or more of the resources for the armor, then drop 4-6 to six fish at the singing bowl, as you'll be collecting the missing resources while we hunt for the tier 3 weapons. Lastly, before leaving to hunt for the tier 3 weapons, fill your vials up with water. Since the 2020 update, bosses only spawn on the middle 3 tiles of the outer ring. Your closest path to any of these sections will always be directly opposite to the Hunlif. Check the middle room, then check each side. If you don't find at least two of the demi-bosses, then zigzag your way to the next boss area. It's incredibly rare to have not found at least two bosses at this point. While you're hunting for the tier 3 weapons, catch any fish, pick any herb, and collect any armor resource you may need. If you have both of the tier 3 upgrades and realize you don't have enough crystal shards left, then kill one or two of the med level NPCs as they drop a sizable amount of shards. If you end up with the staff and the halberd, make sure you collect both weapon frames. Use your teleport crystal and finish crafting your weapons, armor, potions, and don't forget to cook your fish. The obvious key to this whole strategy is a relatively quick hunlift kill. While times can vary wildly, you can keep the times at a low average by doing one very important thing, DPS. The most important part of the hunlift fight is missing as few attack ticks as possible. It should be obvious, but when you're running around trying to dodge tornadoes in the floor, it will escape your mind due to fear of dying. While most of this boils down to good pathing and awareness, there are a few less obvious things you can do to keep your DPS up. The first is knowing hunlift's max hit on prayer with tier 1 armor. It's 13. That means you can keep attacking until you're at 13 HP. You can also tick eat his attack once you're below 13 HP to reduce his DPS, since his max hit is reduced to whatever your HP was. The less you eat, the more DPS you get. When you do end up eating, do it all at once and switch to Augury until you're ready to attack again. Augury has additional magic defense on top of the base 25 defense increase, so you're more likely to negate Hunlift's magic damage attack. Building on this, you can also flick Augury each time the Hunlift attacks. Be careful not to switch to Augury when your attacks are synced though. This tactic is by no means necessary, but it will decrease your chances of dying when you get a really bad Hunlift kill. 
If you find yourself in a messy situation where you aren't praying the correct prayer while you're also trying to escape tornadoes in the floor, then always prioritize getting away from the tornadoes, then the floor, then getting the right prayer up. Remember, the Hun lift can miss, the tornadoes and the floor cannot miss. It's also possible to easily tick eat the Hunless attacks if you don't get your prayer up in time. This is often the best solution in a tricky situation. Another bad position you might find yourself in is being up against the wall with the Hunlift being in between you and the safe tiles. When this happens, it's best just to run straight underneath the Hunlift and tank the stomp. The stomp itself can actually be tick eaten. You can start the tick eat as soon as you see the animation of the stomp starting. For whatever reason, attacking in the gauntlet starts a skilling cycle. What this means is that after attacking, your next skilling action will take place in your next attack should. So if you attack, then take 3 ticks to get to an herb patch, you will instantly pick the herb, like you can see here. This can be used to quickly gather resources while also in combat. Once you've gathered enough of any resource, you can drop the tool used to acquire it. This will clear space and prevent you from having to drop or juggle fish. The staff should be set to accurate, the halberd should be set to aggressive, and the bow should be set to rapid. Lastly, I would highly recommend using the gauntlet helper tool. It's a web app that does nothing more than count down for when to swap prayers. It doesn't have anything to do with client plugins or anything like that. Even though the Hunlift now shows when it's swapping attack styles, the animation only gives you two ticks to react. Having a voice that tells you when to swap prayers five ticks in advance is a lot easier. You can find a link to the Gauntlet Helper tool in the description below. Also found in the description is a post commentary over one of my average Gauntlet kills. Please watch that if you'd like to see all of this put together. As always, I'll do my best to answer any questions you may have in the comments. Thanks for watching.